Hello, I'm Jason Howland, and welcome to Speaking of Health, a place to help you learn how to live a longer and healthier life. A robin singing in the morning, a baby's laugh, the ticking of a clock, all are just examples of sounds many of us take for granted, but not people with hearing loss. However, those folks don't have to live in a world of quieter, less distinct sound. With us today is Dr. John Tunnell. He is a board-certified audiologist at Mayo Clinic Health System. Thanks for joining us today on Speaking of Health. Thanks, Jason. I'm glad to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk about what I do. Well, today we are talking about hearing loss and the help of high-tech hearing aids. First of all, let's start off with the basics. How does the ear work and, and how do we hear sounds through our ears? Well, the ear is a, quite a complex mechanism. It starts with sound vibrations. Anything that vibrates generally produces a sound if it's the one that the frequencies that the ear is sensitive to, like 20 to 20,000 cycles or hertz as they're known. Vibrations go down the ear canal and the first thing they come to is the ear drum and it's just like a regular drum. You know, if you tap it, it resonates, it makes a sound. That drum uh, then transfers vibrations through the middle ear where the bones of the middle ear are located to the hammer, anvil, and the stirrup. They all vibrate and they're positioned in a way that actually amplifies the vibrations before it reaches the cochlea. And the cochlea is where the nerve of hearing begins. As these vibrations go into the cochlea, it's like a, it's filled with fluid. And if you can imagine like seaweed in the ocean, you know, a wave comes by and the seaweed bends. Well, in this fluid, you've got thousands of hair cells that bend with the vibrations. And it's the bending that triggers the electronic impulse sending it down to the nerves to the brain. And where you finally are aware that you've heard a sound. Um, <clears throat> and so the, the, the ear basically is broken down into three general parts, the outer ear, the part that we see, the middle ear on the other side of the eardrum, and then the inner ear where the, the cochlea is, things you can't see, and the rest of the brain. It's a pretty intricate system then it sounds like. Oh, it's extremely complex. It can hear ranges of sounds like it's frequency wise from 20 to 20,000 hertz, but intensity wise from zero dB which is defined as the softest sound an adult normal hearing person can hear. I mean, we're talking about um, just infinitesimal amounts of vibration up to very large, you know, 120, 130 dB sounds, which are um, millions and millions of times louder than the softest sounds. Well, today we are talking about hearing loss. What is the most common cause of hearing loss? Two, th two causes are generally cited as most common, noise and aging. But a lot of the, the hearing loss of aging is also thought to be the result of growing up in a noisy culture. Because uh, studies have been done of people in quiet environments, you know, jungle dwellers, tribes in the jungle, and they mm -hmm. tested the hearing of their elderly. Very good hearing compared to the average person living in America. So they call it socioacoustics. It's just the result of vacuum cleaners, blenders, cars, airplanes, all the things that we take for granted all over a lifetime do have their effect. And what do they do? Do they wear down uh, the workings of the ear over time? Is that what they're doing? It's the main problem is in the hair cells. If they are overstimulated, they become fatigued. Uh, and usually, uh, you know, you can go hunting or something and you, you find that you feel a little bit, your hearing is affected, but the next day, your hearing seems to be better. But you repeat that often enough and the hair cells fatigue and then they die. They actually break off and they don't recover. They don't repair themselves. And so once that happens, that becomes a permanent loss. And it's the high frequencies that tend to be most vulnerable to that. And so most hearing loss is a high frequency loss in the beginning and then it migrates to the other frequencies but uh, that's the most common problem we see. Can hearing loss also be inherited? So for example if my uh, father had hearing loss at an early age does that mean I have a greater chance of hearing oh, yeah. of having hearing loss? The estimates run about 50 percent of all severe hearing loss is inherited mm -hmm. um, and there are certain diseases that pass uh, down family lines quite characteristically and uh, we, we look for those so then we can uh, predict you know, what, what the future is going to look for this person and what they can do about it. Is there a general <clears throat> age group where you start to see signs of hearing loss? Well, you know, we test babies in the nursery mm -hmm. at the hospital. That's now almost every state in the union, I think, has laws for doing that. 
because a lot of inherited loss starts at, in, uh, at birth. Mm -hmm. Some inherited loss may sh start showing up in 30s and 40s. Uh, there's no particular age group. It, it can show up at any time, actually. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the signs and symptoms of hearing loss that, that folks will see? The most common complaint that I get is I hear, <clears throat> I just don't understand what people are saying. And this happens when you're in a room with maybe a, a group of people or a room where there's other noises going on, like a restaurant. They know they're talking, they see the mouth moving, and they hear a sound coming out, but they just can't get the words clearly. So it's not a loss of loudness as much as it is a loss of clarity. So a lot of people don't think they have hearing trouble. They think it's something else. Hmm. Uh, so when should you go see your doctor? Whenever you suspect a problem hearing or if, if family members are telling you, you know, you need to get your ears checked because they will probably recognize it before you do. The person with the problem is sometimes the last one to really find out about it. Go to your family doctor, check your ears, see if you need your ears cleaned. Uh, they may check some other things to make sure your health is good. Uh, and then beyond that, um, they'll refer you to somebody like me, hopefully, and we can do a more in-depth diagnostic test and really see if it's a hearing loss. If it is, the cause of it, possible treatment, uh, how severe it is, what sort of rehabilitation they might, might require. And what are some of those tests that, that you do uh, in audiology? Uh, I usually start off by after we've checked the ears, we'll do what's called tympanometry. It's a pressure test to see how well the eardrum is moving. That will pick up fluid in the ear, holes in the eardrum, perforations, um, abnormalities of the middle ear. Uh, then we do a, an audiometric test. We put earphones on, just like many people have had in school. You know, mm -hmm. hear a beep, you raise yep. your hand. Same sort of thing, except we do much more extensive than what the schools do. After that, we also check for words. We see how, this is the clarity factor, how clearly do you hear? We know what you hear for sounds, but now how, do you, how well do you understand what you hear? And so we will do a test called word recognition test to see how well you can uh, successfully repeat a series of 25 words or so, um, and we do each year independently. Um, and that really is a test that shows, gives us a very good idea how well you're functioning. So when should someone be given help with a hearing aid? Whenever the hearing loss is impacting their life and there are, there's no medical treatment to fix it. You know, they've been to the physician or the ear specialist and, and there's no treatment. That's when they need help with amplification to make things louder. And uh, the hearing aids uh, are designed to pick up primarily the frequencies that you don't hear. They don't amplify every sound, only the sounds that are the most difficult for you to pick up. So it's not like sticking uh, just a general microphone into your ear. It's picking up specific sounds that you're having difficulty with. Exactly. We, the, the hearing aids of today are programmed by the computer. We put your test results in the computer, you know, frequency by frequency, level of de decibel by decibel, and then the hearing aid set, the, the computer sets the hearing aid for that pattern. And so if you have good hearing at one frequency, it won't put any energy there. It'll put it where you need the most help. And I would assume that hearing aids over the last 10, 20, 30 years have uh, improved greatly? Yes. The, the new digital products are really uh, fun to fit. The older analog hearing aids were really, uh, you know, it was, it was an art form. Mm -hmm. Now it's more scientific but we have the computer to help you figure out a lot of these uh, problems of what to fit and how to fit it, and it's really become a lot easier. What are some of the different styles of hearing aids that are out there? Well, there's the, all the styles that used to be are still available. You know, you've got behind the ear hearing aids where you put an ear mold in the ear. Mm -hmm. You've got in the ear hearing aids where an impression of the ear is taken, and then the hearing aid is actually built from that impression. Uh, and the, the newest one to come out and the most popular these days is the over-the-ear, are also called the receiver in the canal, receiver in the ear. Uh, it's, a, the, it's a very small hearing aid behind the ear, then it's just a little thin wire that comes down the front of the ear, and the actual speaker from the hearing aid is down inside your ear canal. And that gives, uh, it, it allows us to keep the ear open rather than plugging it up like we used to with the older hearing aids. Because with the digital revolution, they've learned how to tune out the feedback. You know, the problem that most people had in years past is just feedback, and all of our efforts would go into 
reducing the feedback because you can't hear anything if you're hearing it swistling. Mm -hmm. They've done this uh, digitally now, so now we don't even have to plug up your ear for most cases. Uh, and it's much more comfortable. People love it. People have worn the old hearing aids, switched to the new ones, just can't believe the difference. Uh, besides uh, uh, comfort, uh, are there other benefits for, as far as the hearing uh, with the newer style hearing aids? Well, the, the hearing is more natural. Uh, the digital processing, again, targets just softer sounds. It doesn't make everything louder, just the soft sounds that you don't hear. The louder ones and the, uh, are just kind of left naturally as they are. They've also uh, now incorporating uh, assistive listening functions uh, using Bluetooth technology, where uh, if you, you know, Bluetooth means one device talks to another device exclusively. Nobody else can break into that. And so you can pair the hearing aid to a streamer, and which is a device you wear on you and you get a phone call for instance on your cell phone you push a button and you just can start talking you don't have to hold the phone up to your ear uh, some people have cars that do this well, the hearing aids are do using that same technology that you have in the cars hands-free communication you can also uh, receive your television program that way and adjust the volume to your ears through the hearing aids without the other members of the family having to leave the room you know mm -hmm. because you need it up loud um, and so these things are making life more comfortable for people generally because beside basic communication most people uh, especially senior citizens that um, TV is a very important part of the life and communication on the telephone is a big part of the life and without those two uh, life just isn't as enjoyable and so they're addressing these and making it a lot easier to, to, to use these devices. The Bluetooth hearing aids are they very similar to the Bluetooth headset that you would have for your phone then? It's the same thing and just a different shape, mm -hmm. except the Bluetooth headset doesn't, isn't tailored for your hearing loss. Right. You know, these are, these, the, the sound that you get through the hearing aid is the same sound that the computers decided you'll hear best with. And so it's more advanced than that Bluetooth device. So Dr. Tanel, if someone is experiencing hearing loss, but they put off going to the doctor, is their hearing going to get worse over time? It'll only get worse as it would have naturally, regardless. Hearing aids will not prevent hearing loss uh, from, it, from occurring. Mm -hmm. I mean, it won't stop you getting older. Uh, and there's nothing that the hearing aid does in terms of stimulating the ear to, to protect it in any way. The only problem is the longer you put it off, the harder it is to kind of learn something. I mean, if you wait till you're, uh, you know, can't feel things with your fingers anymore, uh, the sooner you start, the more you'll enjoy it, the more you'll enjoy the benefits of it. So there shouldn't be a fear factor, like if I don't do it, I'm going to lose my hearing. And some, occasionally some people get that feeling. Um, that's not it. It shouldn't be under compulsion. You shouldn't twist anybody's arm to come in. Uh, when they're ready, if it's affecting their lifestyle, they need to come in. And uh, whenever you start, it's the best time. And the process of getting a fitted for a hearing aid, it sounds like it's pretty simple too, right? Pretty simple. Like I said, first check with your family physician. Then we do the, if he refers to us, we'll do the hearing test, check everything out thoroughly. Uh, and then it's just a matter of a uh, 45 minute appointment to program, show the person how to use it, how to clean it and take care of it, change batteries. Then I usually have them come back again in a week or two for a follow up visit. After that, they're pretty much on their own. But if they're having problems, we'll keep seeing them week to week until we solve the problem. And you've been providing services uh, at Mayo Clinic Health System in Fairmont for many years, but you're also going to be in St. James now as well, right? That's right. We'll be going there initially twice a month. And uh, depending on the, the, the reception we get and how many people there are to see, we'll, we'll either up that or re rethink it. And, and that's the same situation where uh, folks in St. James see their family doctor in St. James and then they can be referred to you and see sure. you right in Mayo Clinic Health System in St. James. That's right. That's correct. All right. Well, unfortunately, we are all out of time. I want to thank you, Dr. Tanel, uh, for joining us today on Speaking of Health. It's been a pleasure. Oh, my, yes, it's been my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. And that's it for us. Have a great day, everyone, and be healthy.